to you weekly from Light Tree Studios in Salt Lake City, Utah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Devotion Championship Wrestling. That's right, folks. Lauren Gardner, the C. Cerrone, coming to you, as I said, from Light Tree Studios. We have got a hot crowd in the studio tonight with even hotter action on the card. The C. Cerrone, as always, would like to thank you for being here, especially as this marks our second round of DCW's Match Madness Tournament, presented by, you guessed it, Pit Viper. Although I'm not much for biblical allusions, tonight we have ourselves a David and Goliath setup between Bud Birch and Craig Washington the fourth, with the winner advancing to the semifinals triple threat match. And on the other side of the bracket tonight, we have another mismatched fight between Lola the Adventurer and the man who is always trying to re-grab that brass ring he once held, Andrew Sowell. But to start things off tonight, another quarterfinals match. Two DCW staples will go out of head-to-head -head as the outlaw looks to melt the ice cream man's plans to scoop the championship away from Brother Chatwin. But first, DCW's own executive vice president is standing by with a message. Devoted faithful, I hope you are all enjoying Match Madness brought to you in part by Pit Viper. I know I had a hell of a time putting it together and I think we got something really special here. If I had to pick a favorite to win, I'd have to pick either Tom Chad or Bud Birch, two incredible athletes. But really, this is anyone's game. Why don't you guys tell me who you think is going to win? By going to our socials, Motion Championship Wrestling on Instagram, the Fight app, or YouTube, and let us know who you think is going to win. Whoever it is, I hope they beat the brakes off of Brother Chatwin and bring that title to a well-deserving champion. The boss is hiding nothing. When it comes to who he's hoping to win this match, but if hopes were fishes, folks. In the ring already, we have Tom Chad going against Rusty Living's both big crowd favorites, as you can hear. These two always put on a show, and tonight will be no exception. Our official for this bout, the illustrious Miss Zan Ashby. Folks, if you too would like to learn the art of refereeing and how to manage a couple of bruisers like these two. Come and join us at the Al Snow Wrestling Academy, Utah. Enrollment is now open. Going into a stalemate a couple of times now, these two not being able to get one over the other. Rusty rallying the devoted faithful behind him. There they go, and Rusty does get the advantage going under throwing those Muay Thai knee strikes right into the chest of Tom Chad. Off the ropes, looks for a lariat, misses, dodges a backhand, and Rusty realizing the girth that is Tom Chad. Not so easy to whip around. A quick pull in, looking for a scoop slam. Rusty able to evade. Now, with a step up in Seguri, Knocking Tom Chad right in the side of his head. Calls for it, comes off the ropes, and is caught right around the throat by Tom Chad. Oh, God. A Russian leg sweep backbreaker has got the outlaw just writhing in pain. Tom Chad's going to take advantage, goes for the cover to a kick out from a no doubt stunned outlaw. This match continues. Pulling the outlaw to his feet. Pitches him off the ropes, goes for another lariat. This time, comes in and delivers the ground and pound. Off the ropes, and a big leg drop across Tom Chad's throat. He hooks the leg, goes for the cover. Tom Chad kicks out. Tom Chad's got a lot of girth. It takes a lot to keep his shoulders down. The best advantage that Rusty could have would be time. 
keeping this match going as long as possible. Oh my goodness! Tom Chad with a Pez dispenser sit out power bomb. Shoulder is not down though, so any pin attempt is not going to work. His, I believe his ankle is actually underneath his shoulder, keeping Tom Chad from getting any back time against the outlaw Rusty Livings. No doubt Livings feeling a lot of pain right now, but he is a brawler in every sense of the word. Mostly in that it takes so much to keep him down. But I think Tom Chad looks to bring out the big guns, but slips on the top rope and Rusty rushes in, taking advantage of his testicular misfortune. Tom Chad's testicular misfortune, that is, is Rusty now ascends. No way. He drops it! Never in a million years would I think anyone to superplex Tom Chad. Goes for the cover, two. No! Tom Chad gets his shoulder up. This match continues. It's not over yet. Rusty frustrated. Not out, though. Continues his attack. Wasting no time as he cranks on the neck and gets in a crippler cross face. He's got it in under the chin almost, but Tom Chad, who has been around the block, knows to roll into it. They get into the ropes and are separated. Both wrestlers have shown an incredible amount of ingenuity in this bout. Tom Chad, no doubt, physically spent and exhausted, all the more to Rusty's advantage. Coming in with a big leg lariat to a Tom Chad now with a spinning sabat kick. He's calling for some sweet knee music. Tom Chad sees it coming, and a big old fashioned atomic drop right on the coccyx. Tom Chad looking for that five scoop leg drop. It's an amazing thing to see a super heavyweight fly. There it is! He's got, he's got to be out. Goes for the cover, two. And that's it, folks. Tom Chad progresses to the semifinal triple threat bout. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, Tom Chad. Tom Chad, one step closer to making good on his promises to MK and the DCW Heavyweight Champion. We'll be back with the next quarterfinal match right after this. Hey, DCW. <laughs> Cutting, this is about to blow up in your stupid fascist face. It's gonna be me going to the finals to become number one contender and then face off against, oh, hey, look who it is. That's Brother Champ. I was just talking about you, brother. Come on, uh, let's, I got something to show you because <clears throat> look at this. Look at what I got here. I have everything planned out. I've done the mathematics. Look at that. So well against, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. All these dum-dums. So well, so well, so well. And then it's gonna be me and you, one-on-one. -on -one. And that's just the way I like it. You like it too, like that, right? Yeah. We're gonna go easy on each other though, right? Because. I mean, we went to the extreme against that dumb, dumb Manny Lemons and Tommy Dreamer, right? Yeah, so let's... I got this. I got this! <laughs>
I'm going to have to talk to our technical director to find out who left a camera lying around. In the ring right now, we have the big man, Craig Washington IV, taking on BB Bud Birch. Of course, our senior referee, Big Drew Templar. I told you the devoted faithful were fired up tonight, and they are not disappointing. Come and join us at our next show, folks. Be part of the action. A former Rikishi himself, perhaps also no stranger to Kabuki as he's showing a physical uh, demonstration of how much smaller Bud Birch is. But Birch putting on a demonstration of his agility. The man can move like no other right there. He is as spry as anyone in the locker room. However, it's hard to avoid a bulldozer when it's coming right at you. Oh gosh, a big old pendulum single-armed ax handle right in the middle of Birch's back, puts him to a knee, he pops back up, and now with a double-headed sumo palm strike, Birch gets the wind knocked out of him against the turnbuckles, and he is doing all that he can. Meanwhile, the big man, the shock broker, continues to devastate. It's almost as if he's a lion in the zoo just playing with his food. Now, dragging Birch into the center, goes for the cover. Birch being encouraged by the devoted faith to continue trying to mount some sort of an offense, but oh my lord! Soundly put down into the mat with a swinging right fist back into that turnbuckle where he lost his win not once but twice and now being shoulder sledded back in to the ring post. Whipped across the ring, Birch goes right across and followed up but the momentum of a man of such size is hard to slow down. Favoring his right shoulder, or excuse me, left shoulder. Washington comes back in using his, oh gosh, again, those big old ham hocks of his, but Birch goes for a thigh kick, followed up with his own ax handle into the shoulder of Washington and a staying vertical drop kick, almost taking off Washington's head. Go up he does, however anticipated, oh my goodness sakes. Brought right down into a overhead power slam, followed up by an Edmund Honda style palm thrust. Goes for the cover. Burke still in this game. You know, it, it's like I said when he went up against Rekete Haka, the guy has got more heart than, than brains almost because anyone else you would think would see that the stakes do not stack up. No! Oh my goodness, look at that! The agility of Birch on display as he goes into a seated Juji Katami. Oh my goodness! The pressure, all of it being transferred across the elbow, right into the shoulder. You can see the pain across Washington's face. Birch is putting all of his weight, he's bucking like a Blanco. That's it, folks, I don't believe it! That's it! Ladies and gentlemen, the winner, Bud Bird. Absolutely incredible, folks. This brings us to a close of the first bracket of Pit Viper Presents DCW's Match Madness. We now have both semifinal matches set, and we're going to get to one of them still tonight. Coming up next, folks, it's Andrew Sowell taking on the adventurer, Lola with the winner advancing to the final round, at which point the winner will go on to a three stages of hell match for the DCW Heavyweight Championship against Brother Chatwood. Will this pint-sized Peruvian princess prove that she's got what it takes 
to take out the proletariat's projector? We'll find out next. See you soon, man. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. What in the Sam hell is this? So well, dum dum. Ha! Cutting sucks. I wonder who the hell was in here. You know what? So well. I hope Lola beat some sense into you. I believe she can. I know it's a supersized task for your supersized ass. But she's going to get the job done. And if you step into my office again, we're going to have words. This is why I can't have nice days! From anywhere but this fascist state, and to say his name would be body shaming. Andrew, so well. A former DCW heavyweight champion himself, Andrew so well would love nothing more than a straight path to that golden championship yet again. claiming that we're going to be seeing a lot more of him. I think we definitely see enough. Nick, get out of the way. Nick, Nick, see? That's what happens. Yeah. As my old man used to always say, boy, you run with the big dogs, you gotta learn to be in the tall grass. Andrew Sowell actually coming from his own dumpster fire of a state, California, no offense representative of the talent here. And yes, folks, I need to uh, talk about who is letting these matches happen without any weight being noted on Andrew so well. It's not fat shaming, it's science. Hey, 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 so because this kid needs it. Oh, hey, hey, come on now. We don't need you to, to armchair parent here, although the kid probably should have been seated. And making her way from the Amazon jungle, Lola the Adventurer. Always a fan favorite. And, you know, I was just thinking of, of the three seasons that DCW Television has been airing. Lola has been part of some of the most memorable moments. The birth of Josh Glade's doll. The friendship between she and that monster of a man. The first time she beat Mean Mike. The second, third, fourth, and I, I think even the fifth time she beat Mean Mike. All memorable moments here at DCW. So Andrew Sowell has brought out what he's called a participation trophy that he's given to referee Zan Ashby that he said he will be giving to Lola. But you know what? She calls for the bell, it sounds. Lola is never one to be shut down or shouldn't ever be counted out. Lola trying to use her 
biggest inside voice. Oh, Andrew Sowell. Jaw jacking. Andrew Sowell proclaiming to be a feminist and an ally of Lola's. And this is the easy path that Andrew Sowell is always looking to take. But the devoted faithful do not trust him and I doubt that Lola is going to either. Giving her one last chance, he says, to lay down. I'm sorry, I'm not reached. I'm here at the back of the arena. Simon says, please lay down on your back so I can pin you and then go on. I believe in Spanish it's uh, Simon. Simone. She does lay on her back. Andrew Sowell, of course, falls for it as a basement drop kick to the solar plex. Puts Sowell down, but he gets back up. Sowell comes back in with the Rana and brings the big man down and into the corner. The devoted faithful are fired up. The Peruvian princess comes in, slamming Sowell into the turnbuckle, not once, but twice. Now, with a running bulldog, busting the gourd of Andrew Solo over Zan Ashby checking on that. Well, he's something that's all right. That is for sure. Lola allowing the Sowell a chance to get back up. She's ready to take him on. She rushes in and is met with that, I don't know, I'll take a stab at it, 36 inch circumference knee of Andrew Sowell. Oh, hey, come on now, get off the hair, Andrew. Oh yeah, yeah, cause that's what allies do. This slacktivist has been nothing but a shame across the face of DCW when Tom Chad brought him in as a tag team partner in March of 2019. You deep dive interneters might be able to find that. Off the ropes comes Lola, dodges a roundhouse, comes back off and is caught and slammed right into the mat. Lola is feeling it. The full power that is Andrew Sowell to Lola kicks out, Sowell drags her back down, goes for another cover, two, kicks out yet again, getting her shoulder up. Andrew Sowell is, I'm no doubt sure, furious that he's had to exert not one but two pinfalls only to be kicked out of. Lola coming in, hitting Sowell right in the ribs, and oh my good night, Irene. Andrew Sowell brings Lola down with that mallet of a fist swung at a full pendulum. Lola looking to get to the ropes to pull herself up. Hey. Andrew Sowell taking his time to make sure he's educating the people with a chokehold against the ropes. Andrew Solo again fading the role of ally. He's more of an axis than an ally. Now, taking Lola with the whip off the ropes, goes through the roundhouse, she dodges. Now, goes up with another Lana, putting Solo into the corner. The devoted faithful behind her, this could be Lola's chance to mount a substantial offense as she brings in those pin-sized fists. Sowell quickly puts her into the corner. 
distances himself, perhaps looking to get a head of steam. So well masks up and charges in, but Lola gets out of the way. And that freight train goes chest first into the turnbuckle. Lola, with a shot to the solar plex, looks to chop the big man down with a lariat and a leg lariat. And now with a Russian leg sweep, Lola covers the big man, goes to, no, so well. I think perhaps could have got out sooner, but folks, I say this all the time and I cannot, I really cannot make a fine enough point of how smart Sowell is in that he understands his limits and therefore only exerts the maximum, or excuse me, the minimum amount of energy that is required. Up to their feet, Sowell whips Lola off the ropes, goes for another roundhouse. Sowell sees the Rana coming, tornadoes out of it, and oh, the political agenda! Goes for the cover, and that's it, folks. The winner, and moving on to the next match, Andrew Sowell. Andrew Sowell, officially a finalist, despite the wants and desires of our executive vice president. Now, taking the person that he claims to be ally to be standing up for by the hair and gives her a participation trophy. Well, I mean, it's a jerk move, but I've seen one. Oh, oh, come on, oh, my lord. This guy. Folks. We've got a triple threat coming up next week to determine who will be the other finalist against Andrew Sowell. Folks, you don't want to miss it. July 9th, be here at Light Tree Studios for our next live taping. As always, folks, I'm Lauren Gardner, the Ciceroni. Thanks for spending some time with us and bringing us into your home. Until next time, make sure to stay devoted. Now I will kill you.